All right, what's going on everyone? My name is John and welcome back to the channel. In the short little video, I wanted to cover two promise-based methods called promise.all and promise.all settled that can help significantly increase the performance and speed while writing asynchronous functionality into your websites or applications. So let's jump right into it. So before we begin to cover these two promise-based methods of promise.all and promise.all settled, I want to run you through a quick example here of an asynchronous function, and then we'll take this function and convert it to using promise.all and also promise.all settled, and I'll explain the differences between the two. So for our function here, we are declaring it asynchronous by using this keyword of async right here. And once we do this, it turns this function to be asynchronous. And inside of the function, since we're using async here as a keyword, we also get the ability to now use another keyword inside of our function called await. And what await does is we're actually making API requests here. So these are going to return a promise, each one of these will. And what this keyword of await is saying is, let's wait for that promise to fulfill before we go on to the next line. So once this promise uh, fulfills on line three, then we'll go to line four. Once that one fulfills, we'll go to line five and then so on. Okay, so for example, if we come out here and we say post one and we just run this function here, I have my index.html file hooked up to our app.js here. And if we go over to the browser, which is opened using live server, we can see here inside of the console, we're gonna get returned back all this data here. So pretty simple. So taking a look at our function here, there is absolutely nothing wrong with how we did things here. It's totally okay to await for one promise to finish here before going on to the next one. And in some cases that may be exactly what you're trying to do. Say for example, you're making a request to get some data and then you need a portion of that data to make an additional request. That's totally possible and it's totally something that happens quite often. But in our example here, none of these requests are going to rely on the data from any of these four requests here themselves. So we really don't have any reason to await one to finish before going on to the next one. What would be ideal is if we could have all these run at once and then once they all resolve, we go on to run the rest of this function here. And that's exactly where promise.all comes in. So let's convert our function here to using this method instead of what we currently have right now, which is awaiting for one promise to resolve before going on to the next. So to begin, let's remove all these keywords of await. So essentially what's gonna happen is when we call or invoke this function, we're going to initiate all of these promises here. And we can kind of see this because we're still logging out to the council here, JSON one through JSON four. And inside of our council here, you can see that when we do that, we get logged out here, a promise that is currently pending. All right. So next up, we want to create a new variable here and we'll call this promise all and also this is equal to promise dot all. And this method takes in an array of all the promises. So since we already have our uh, request here stored inside of variables, we'll just pass in here each one of our variables as an array inside of this method. So JSON one, then we have JSON two, we can say JSON three, and then finally, let's see here if I can type JSON four. All right, now next what we're gonna do is we're going to actually comment out all of these uh, console.logging of our JSON one through JSON four, because what's gonna happen when we use this method here is it's going to resolve all the results of our request here into this variable here of promise all. So instead of logging out JSON one through JSON four, we'll just say console.log here and we'll do promise all. So now if we head back over to our browser, you can see, well, we still have this result that we're logging out of promise that is currently pending. Well, when we use the promise.all method when using it within an async and await uh, function here like we are, we still want to await this to finish. So if we do that, we can now see that we have all of our results here. And if we expand this array, you can see that we have all the data for each one of our requests here. So just to solidify what exactly we're doing here and make sure that everything makes sense, I'll run through the function once more and explain what we're doing. 
So when we call or invoke this function, all of our promises here are going to be initiated. Then we're going to await for all the promises to resolve here with our promise.all method along with our keyword of await. Then all the results of the promises will actually be stored here inside of this variable we have called promise all. And as you can see, we're logging that out to the console here and inside of our browser, we see all the results here. So the best way for me to explain what's happening here is instead of running each one of these requests individually, when we use promise.all, we're able to run all these requests simultaneously. So hopefully you're able to see the benefit to using promise.all when writing asynchronous functionality that deal with promises as it's going to increase the speed and performance. Now back here inside of our function, what if one of these endpoints that we have here errors out while using this promise.all method, what's going to happen? Well, we can actually simulate this happening here if we come up to maybe our first endpoint here and then add in an extra M here to throw out this endpoint so that we know it errors out. So if we save this, we come over to our console, we're going to see that we get this error and the reason why, because we have a try catch block here. And if this errors out at any point, it's going to catch it. And then we're going to log out that error here. Now, this may be the desired functionality that you're looking for if one of your API endpoints air out, you don't want to show anything on the page, and then you'll handle that correctly by showing some error message here saying that something went wrong, etc. But what if maybe, for example, this function was for something like your dashboard data where you have multiple widgets of, you know, different things that aren't dependent on the whole page, and maybe if one of them air out, you can handle that individually by having some error message uh, specifically in that component component, but you want to still show the other data. Well, this is not going to work because as you can see here, it's going to air out the function and it's never going to actually finish here. It's going to, once it catches that error, it's going to log it out and that's it. Well, there's another method we can use here called promise.allsettled that although maybe you'll have an error that happens within your promise, it'll still fulfill. So instead of using promise.all here, let's change this to promise.all settled and see what happens. So keep in mind, we are still having this error out endpoint here. So now if we come over to our console, we still do see that error, but now we're actually getting logged out here, all the results of our promise.all settled here. So if we open this up, we can see it looks a little bit different than our promise.all. We now have these uh, properties inside of each object with the status either of rejected or fulfilled here. And if it was rejected, it gives us a reason. If it's fulfilled, we have the value. And inside of that value, we just have the data. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see here, when using promise.all settled, although we may have an error within one of our endpoints, this is still going to resolve. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the video here today, guys. Hopefully you did learn something new and can start implementing these two methods of promise.all and promise.all settled into your websites or applications to make them just a little bit more efficient. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.